This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good morning, and welcome to Out of the Comfort Zone on the Think Tech live streaming network series, broadcasting from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza at the core of downtown Honolulu. I'm Arby Kelly, body language boss, and your new host. I've got a very special, very special guest joining me today, but first there are a few things I want to share with you. As you know, this is a new show. This is the very first episode. When I signed on to host this show, our CEO, Jay, sat down with me to decide where we wanted the show to go and what our focus would be. He told me that Think Tech Hawaii strives to live up to the words, every day better. And you can't see, but here in the studio in front of me is a sign reading, lifelong learning lives here. As Jay and I discussed our options, we realized that in order to make every day better, you can't do what you've always done. The only way to improve and grow and change is to get out of the comfort zone. To help you get out of the comfort zone, each episode is going to have three things. First, there will be a book recommendation that has helped me get out of the comfort zone, so you can do some extra reading. And I trust this book will do the same for you. Then there will be a body language tip to help you grow your confidence, your relations, your charisma. And finally, we're going to have a wicked awesome guest to wrap things up. The book today is called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. If you love to read, you're gonna love this. If you hate to read, you're gonna love this. This is a short and powerful book that was recommended to me by my mentor, Pam Chambers, and I'm so glad she did. If you've dreamed of doing something great, but your dreams just never seem to come true, then this is the book for you. Here's a quote from The Jacket. Creative work is a gift to the world and every being in it. Don't cheat us of your contribution. Give us what you've got. And that's from Stephen Pressfield. Again, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Now this book gave me a real kick in the pants just this last week, which is the reason I'm recommending it to you today. It's short, it's quick, you can find it in a library, any bookstore, or online. Now what happens when we begin to leave the comfort zone is that we begin to get a little nervous. Nervous, stressed, anxious, our brains don't like trying something new or unknown. Our brains begin to panic. When your brain is stressed or uncomfortable, it sends messages to your body to fix it. One of the ways to soothe your brain is to use certain gestures. These movements are called self-soothing gestures, nervous gestures, pacification gestures. When we begin to make these movements, our brains release oxytocin. It's a soothing, safe, bonding kind of chemical that makes us feel a little bit better. So here are some of the movements we make when we're nervous, all right? You might see people kind of wringing their hands like this or like playing with their jewelry, adjusting their jewelry. Anytime that happens, maybe they'll start fidgeting with their clothes, brushing off their sleeves. Maybe they'll kind of play with their hair, rub the back of their neck, adjust their jewelry, sweep their hair behind their ear. Let's see, maybe you'll see men do this often. They'll like adjust their tie while women will like play with their jewelry or their necklaces. Or sometimes you'll just see people kind of rub their neck like this. All of these are nervous gestures that let you know if you're doing them, you're feeling nervous. If someone else is doing them, there's a good chance that person is feeling pretty nervous. Now, every time you try to do something new, whether that's public speaking, whether that's going skydiving for the first time, any, whether that's asking someone out on a date and you're not sure what they're gonna say, Anytime you go out of your comfort zone and try something new, your brain gets worried. And so because it's feeling stressed, it tells you to, to calm it down. And without even realizing, you'll start to see these self-soothing gestures. You'll start to see these fidgeting. You'll start to see this. Anytime you see someone start to fidget like this, that's a really good sign they're feeling a little nervous. And of course, when you see that, you want to find a way to calm them down. If you're the one doing it, you want to find a way to calm yourself down um, without broadcasting to everyone how nervous you're feeling. One of the easiest ways, if you're gonna try something new, you're panicking a little on the inside but you don't want it to show, is to kind of stroke this area, right between your collarbones, on the bottom of your neck. If you kind of stroke or rub this area, it's actually really, really soothing. I'm starting to calm down now, Ooh. All right, so that's an easy way to calm down if you're feeling nervous and I hope that gives you um, some comfort when you're going out of the comfort zone. And now let's go on to our wicked awesome guest. This is a really good friend of mine, 
Joining me in the studio today is Kajana Movery, but I often call him Cage. He's the CEO of High Social Agency. Now today we're talking about standing out on social media. So Cage, what's your story? What brings you here? How are you here today? What's, what's brought you from where you were to where you are now? Okay, so what brought me here today is well, you asked me, and I was like, hey, I got nothing else to do, so <laughs> I showed up. But see, what brought me to social media is so, Quick backstory, I was a college reject. I was removed from college my second year for lifestyle infractions. Let's keep it there. So, you know, I did the typical thing. I came back and I was lost. I didn't know what I was doing. And I met this lady who runs a very large marketing agency, uh, Chemcom. Her name is Jennifer Kim. And I approached her and I'm all like, hey, Ken, uh, Jen, I will work for you for $5 an hour if you teach me how to do everything that you know how to do. And she's like, mm, what's your skill set? And I told her nothing because I literally had no skill set at the time. And then she's like, OK, you can start off as my customer service representative. And so I started with that job and I worked for her for two years at $5 an hour. And I worked my way up from being a customer representative to being her uh, chief data analysis and marketing campaign manager. And at the end of that, one month, she's all like, okay, Kajana, I'm going to fire you in a month, so you better go and start your own agency. And I'm all like, uh, I, I can do that. I can do that. So long story short, I went through that, and I learned that social media allows us to expand our sphere of influence. You know, in Hawaii, we're really big on word of mouth marketing you know oh you know so and so did that new thing oh do you see your daughter she's doing that oh i saw a baby girl down the street social media allows you to take those conversations and expand the amount of people that it reaches and allows people who you don't normally see in your everyday life to be able to share in that story with you so mm. long story short that's where i went from being a college reject to being the ceo of a social media agency wow Wow. So what does your day look like now? What keeps you busy these days? Oh man, everything. So we're at a point of our business where we're not so big that I'm able to work on growing the business. So I'm very much stuck in the day to day. So, you know, as much as I am going out and finding new clients and making sales and bringing in new companies, I'm also in the weeds. I'm making graphics. I'm putting together videos. I'm writing copy, putting together landing pages and a bunch of other technical jargon that goes with the marketing world. So it sounds like you're intimately connected to every aspect of your business. I would Someone like to think so. is using your business, they're dealing with you. Yes. All right. So it seems like in Hawaii, you said earlier, people prefer word of mouth. Yep. Um, how does the role of social media play in to how people feel about it here in Hawaii? Okay, so one of the biggest fears that I've seen from people when it comes to social media is they're afraid of people seeing what they're doing and judging them on that, Ooh. right? And this isn't any different than the same fear that they have when it's just word of mouth. You know, it's the same thing when you go to a party and you see that one crazy auntie and you're like, ah, crazy auntie, let's not talk to her. And then everyone starts talking about, oh, look, there's crazy auntie again. She's acting all nuts. The same principle applies to social media. People fear that when they put themselves out there that people would judge them for the things that they're not doing instead of celebrating them for the things that they are doing. When in actuality, people want to support you. People want to see what you're doing. People are interested in people. So if you actually take this idea that by putting yourself onto social media, more people will be interested in what you're doing, you'll see that you're going to actually attract what we call a tribe of people who celebrate and support you. Wow. Wow. So it sounds like people are afraid that if they put themselves out there on social media, they're going to be judged. Um, or they're going to lose friends, lose face, mm -hmm. be, be put down. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you're saying that when they put themselves out there, they actually have the chance to kind of be a role model, to be celebrated, to attract people to them, to help and, and support them. Is that right? That's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. So how do you use social media these days? Okay, so I am something called a, a influencer. So this is the type of person that when they're on social media and they talk about things, people take their opinion into heavy consideration. Mm. So what that looks like for me is my platform is I believe in impact, I believe in social good, and I believe in going out and doing the work, hence the hustle hat, right? So what I do is, when I'm on social media, all I do is document what I'm doing in my life. 
you know, some days that's epic and I'm following clients around in like New York City or California or I'm following people to Austin, Texas and I get to share these stories of me going out there. Other days, it's really just me going and saying, man, just work for 25 hours. There's only 24 hours in a day. How the heck did this happen? But I just share what it is I'm doing. I just mm -hmm. document whatever it is that I'm doing in my day-to-day -day life. Gotcha. Now, full disclosure, I actually follow Kajana, so I get to see a lot of these posts. And it's absolutely true what you say about impact. Basically, every time you post on social media, usually I scroll through what everyone else is saying. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> but for Kajana, every time I read your posts, and at the end of every post, I'm like, whoa, that's so true. And you always, you always motivate me. You always give me a new direction to go to help build my impact. So I love that. I love that you're doing that. Oh, sweet. Thanks, RV. Not that I would know because you don't like anything. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'll get better. I'll get better. Baby steps. All right. So what are some baby steps that you would recommend for our audience, people who are watching? How can they start to stand out on their social media? How can they get over their fear of standing out on social media? So the number one tip I always recommend is just be yourself. You know, in a world where, you know, everyone's on Instagram, like flashing how much money they have, or people on, are on Facebook showing that they're traveling all over the world, or people are on Snapchat saying, hey, I'm with so-and-so celebrity, people can smell when you're not being yourself. Mm -hmm. And it comes out very clearly on social media. So the number one tip is definitely, by far, just be yourself. That authenticity that you bring, it's a cliche thing, but no one can be you. Everyone knows this. It's a very well said thing. But it's truth. No one can explain or share a story the way that you can. Someone can experience the exact same thing as you, but have a very different takeaway, a very different storyline, a very different way of sharing their story. So if it's really, really as simple as taking what you do and crafting it into a story that is true to you. Mm. Perceived authority. Perceived That's really cool. That's really powerful. Um, and I can see this echoing throughout real life, whether on social media or in real life, there's always this kind of underlying fear that if we truly authentically be ourselves and, and stand out and celebrate ourselves, people are going to try and drag us down instead. They're going to try and almost punish us for being awesome. Yep, this is very true. There's actually that poem by Marianne Williamson where she talks about we're not really afraid of our darkness, we're actually afraid of our light about standing out, and by living our true selves, we give people around us the courage to do the same. Wow, that's really cool, Kajana. I love, that you, I love that you empower people to be themselves in real life, but also on social media. Yeah, you know, it really is that, it's really that simple in theory, and even in practice, really just talking about what you value, because as you talk about it, more people will want to be a part of your conversation. I like to think of it as when you walk into a room and there's a group of people, it's difficult, not that it's difficult, it's actually impossible to talk to the entire room at once. Mm. But if you talk to one person and you just continue to engage real conversation with them, you get them to really understand you, to really vibe with you, eventually they'll turn and they'll invite someone else into the conversation. Mm. And then they'll turn and they'll invite more people into the conversation. And if you do this consistently over and over and over, giving your authentic point of view to these people, before you know it, the entire room is captured by what you're talking about. Wow. Wow, that's a really awesome way to explain that, how you start out with one person and on Facebook, that might be just, you know, one like. Maybe you post something you think is really cool, and you get one like. And a lot of people take that, and they're really discouraged by that. But it sounds like you can just start out small. You just take the baby steps, and you keep putting your authentic self out there until people start to, to find you. People start to come to you drawn by the true self that you're actually showing them. Yeah, and now that you mentioned that, it's actually a really good point. You only see one like, but when you go to the store and you see someone who follows you, hey, I saw that you were in New York last week. Oh yeah, you, I was in New York. And then you go back and see, they didn't like anything, but they saw you. Uh -huh. Just because they don't give any kind of reciprocation saying that, hey, I acknowledge what you're doing, people are still watching you. Mm. You never know who's watching, so that's why it's important that it's always authentic and it's only what you're truly doing because you don't want to become off as that poser or a fake or a liar or inauthentic. You want to be seen for who you really are, which is the whole idea of this expanding sphere of influence that is social media. 
that's really cool, the silent lurkers and the expanding sphere of influence. Now we've got to take a break, but when we come back, I want to hear more about that, all right? Definitely. All right, so we're, we're taking a break. I'm Larby Kelly, and this is Out of the Comfort Zone on the ThinkTech live streaming network series. We're talking with Kajana Movery about standing out on social media. We'll be back in a minute, so stay tuned for more of this story. This is ThinkTech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. We're back, we're live. I'm Arby Kelly, your body language boss, and this is Out of the Comfort Zone on the ThinkTech live streaming network series. We're talking about standing out on social media with Cage Movery. So Kajana, is social media a fad? Ha, um, it's actually surprising how often I get this question. Social media is not a fad, though a lot, I can see how a lot of people would think that. You know, this has always been the case for every platform of media that has ever existed. The radio came out, people were like, no one's gonna listen to the radio, the radio will never become important. You know, before you know it, people had radio ads, people were selling things on the radio. Eventually the TV rolled out, no one's gonna watch the TV, who's gonna sit down and watch this box when on the go, I can have the radio playing for me? You know, okay. Eventually, everyone moves to TV. Everyone starts watching TV. It becomes a family thing. And then people start selling things via TV. And then the internet comes out. The internet's a fad. It's not actually going to work. It's never going to work. No one's actually going to sit down and go on this box to do what they want. And you know, that was the case in the beginning. And then the internet blew up and everyone started using the internet. And people started selling things via website. And then email came out. And they're like, no one's ever going to use email to communicate with people. It doesn't make any sense. Why would we do this? And then, I'm pretty sure the story's getting repetitive, the email <laughs> blew up and everyone started selling things on email and communicating via email. And then Facebook came out and everyone's like, no one's gonna go on Facebook. We have email, we have forums, we have TV. And that was the truth in the beginning. And then Facebook blew up and then everyone had Facebook. Everyone and their grandmother had Facebook. And then from Facebook spawned things like Instagram and Snapchat and Pinterest, et cetera, et cetera. But the point is that People are afraid that social media won't be a real thing. They're afraid that it's going to collapse and that there's going to be a huge change in society and people are afraid that you can't actually use social media for business because that's not professional. Well, at one point in time, TV wasn't professional. At one point in time, radio wasn't professional. At one point in time, emails weren't professional. But eventually, they worked their way into the fold to be extremely professional and important. So in all of this, my point is that social media is here. It, it will continue to be here. It's not going anywhere. It's completely changed the way that people deal with their lives. It allows a form of escapism that's never, ever been achieved before, where you had to go home and sit down and get ready for your TV. Now you can be standing in line at the bank. Oh, I wonder what my friend's doing on Instagram. You can be waiting for your food. Oh, look, Facebook. Oh, I like that girl so much. Click. The capabilities of it being integrated into our lives is ridiculous. So no, Arby Kelly, it is not a fad and it will be here for a long time, at least until VR happens and AR and robots take over. Wow, robots taking over. That might be a future story. But when you say it's a fad, I know for me, I got a notification the other day on Facebook that it was my face anniversary or something. I'd been a member of Facebook for nine years and you guys don't know how old I am. But that is, um, that's more than half and less than a third of my lifetime. So that is a big deal, especially for this rising generation. You have these new professionals who are mm -hmm. coming into the mainstream, coming into business, where this is just a way of life for them. 
What role do you think that's going to play in, in the workplace as, as things start to grow and change? I think that um, social media in the workplace will become a more pivotal pillar, if you will, in that social media is easily accessible and allows anyone to claim authority, right? But what it allows as well is it allows people to give feedback in a way that wasn't generated before, right? Mm -hmm. Before, you could not, well, technically you could, but it was difficult to collect information unless you're specifically asking someone for information. Now, if you put something on the social media, everyone gives their input because everyone has something to contribute or at least they perceive they have something to contribute, both in positive and negative ways. Mm. So having social media actually allows businesses and brands to expand the influence that they have using influencers. So, for example, if you look at um, companies like Nike, right? They have people who endorse their products, athletes, rappers, actors, celebrities in general, right? And those are great ways to get people to engage them with them via t television commercials and billboards and, I don't know, radio ads and newspaper prints, who cares, right? But by taking all of what they do and moving it onto social media, it's no longer, you know, Kobe Bryant who's making me buy these shoes. It's now my best friend from down the street making me buy these shoes because he's all like, bro, I got these sick Jordans or Kobe's, who cares? I got these sick, sick shoes. Guys, you should get one. Now, me being his best friend, I'm all like, bro, those are some sick shoes, I gotta get those. It allows a much more authentic connection as opposed to when you're watching some celebrity who, who are you to that celebrity? Where do you have a connection to them? Sure, they're cool, but this person is like my homie. I listen wow. to what they say. So it sounds like social media can be even more authentic. And that's one of the arguments I hear from my mom and from my parents when they talk about why they don't like social media. They say it's not authentic. But the way you're talking about it, it sounds like social media can be even more authentic than the, the TV ads, the radio ads that we hear all the time. Oh yeah, for sure. You see, you know, like anything else in life, it's easy to lie. You can lie on any platform. You can, I could lie to your face. I could lie to you on social media. I could lie through to text. I can lie via a message. But the, the thing is, it, again, back to the piece about inauthenticity. When you're inauthentic, people can feel that, and people won't vibe with you. They won't connect with you. They won't you know, go out of their way to follow what you're doing. But if you choose to be authentic in everything that you do, the exact opposite happens. People want to find you. People want to listen to you. People want to see what you think about certain topics of the world. People want to see what you're doing because you've given them a real connection and allow them to see what I like to call it as a authentic, a window into your authentic life. Wow. It's like opening the window and people can look through and see what you're doing and then, okay, on to the next thing. Wow, that is really cool. That is really cool. I really like that. Now, I know some of our audience members are probably thinking, ugh, social media, I don't use that, I don't want to use that. My kids use that, or my grandkids use that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so what is a practical example of what you would tell those watchers who, um, who are a little afraid to start on social media, or who aren't, who are a little nervous about that? Okay, so I would start with something as simple as, the next time you have an event, whether it's a family event, a work event, a personal life event, just snap a picture, don't put any words, and just put it on social media. Literally that simple. The reason is, these doing something so small as just putting a picture allows people to scroll through their feed and be all like, oh look, they're so-and-so doing that one thing. Good for them. Maybe they'll like it, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll comment, maybe they won't. But as you continue to do this, just putting really simple things about yourself out there, as you go about life, your friends will be all like, huh, hey, I saw that you were doing that one thing. Hey, congratulations on getting married. Hey, I just saw that your baby turned three. Good job, awesome, great parenting, good for you. Because you're giving them the opportunity to see a piece of your authentic life. Wow. So it's really that simple. And as you do it more often, like anything, the more you do it, the more confident you become, the more you're willing to share, the more open and vulnerable you're willing to become, just like any relationship. You don't just meet a girl and be all like, I love you. I mean, you could, that's just really awkward, right? <laughs> you need to build that relationship, you need to get them to like and trust you and really edge your way up, right? Get gotcha. them to open up. Same gotcha. thing with social media. If you come up then you're like, guys, buy this for me, or guys, I just had the worst day of my life, they're gonna be all like, 
whoa, that was like way out here. But if you open up with really small things and you get them to connect with you and see who you are and see what you're about, you can build a tribe of people who really care about you and what you offer to the world. That is really cool. I really like that. Now, my parents growing up told me to be like almost a little bit afraid of social media. Like, what if, what if some predator finds your information? Mm. What if, um, what would you advise for that? Well, I mean, obviously, you don't want to like, you know, say, "Hey guys, I live on 42nd Street in building number 4C. <laughs> you should totally check me out." That is just a really stupid idea, and you shouldn't do it. But at the same time, you can't be afraid of what could happen because you're being reckless. Things can happen any day. I could stand up, trip over this chair, fall, break my neck, I'm done. Is that gonna stop me from standing up though? Will it stop me from standing up and going to the next thing? You can put yourself on social media and if you're more afraid of what people will say, okay, that's fine, but will you get what you want? Like anything else, you have to get uncomfortable to get the result because change requires tension and if there's no tension, nothing happens. Wow. That is awesome advice. That is awesome advice, Gajana. If you guys have any additional questions, you can reach out to us on Twitter, um, at ThinkTechHI, all right? We would love to hear from you. Now, we're running out of time. We're gonna have to start wrapping it up. I'm Marby Kelly. This is Out of the Comfort Zone on the ThinkTech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Kajana Mowry, CEO of the High Social Agency. So thank you, Kajana, for being here. You've got a couple seconds. Is there anything else you'd like to say? What I could say, stop waiting, go for it, because what you want is right on the other side of what you're afraid to do. That is powerful. How can we find you, Kajana? How can our watchers find you? Um, so you can visit my website, uh, which is www.highsocialagency.com, or if you're more interested in my personal life and story, you can find me at, on all of the major platforms at The Social Marketing Dude. Awesome. Thank you, Kajana. Thank you so much for coming. So thank you. To our executive producer, thank you for all the people. There are a lot of people here in the studio that you can't see, and they've been taking care of anything. So thank you to our listeners for listening, and Think Tech will be back tomorrow for the next show in our Think Tech live streaming network series. So please tune in, tell your friends to tune in, and if you like this show, you can find it online, on YouTube, on Facebook, and you can share it with your friends. It's a good way to practice your social media. So if you'd like to be a guest or underwriter or volunteer, if you want to join us in our studio, please contact Jay at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want the links to our live streams or our previous broadcasts, you can visit ustream.tv or youtube.com or just go to thinktechhawaii.com. And I'll be here next, unless I'm fired after the show, on October 5th for more advice on getting out of the comfort zone on ThinkTech. I'm Marby Kelly. Thank you so much. Aloha, everyone.